All right, welcome back. I'm standing next to Tataru. Who just offered to give me job gear at level 89. And then I went in quest to die my job, job gear. My job gear has died. I am currently now ready to accept the next quest. Friends gathered. I realize you just got lots of lots to do before you depart, but the the fart? The part, so I won't keep you keep you any longer. I do hope you find a moment for yourself and that the others uh, can as well. They said they were returning to the Baldessian Annex, though I doubt they stayed for long. If you decide to go looking for them, I suggest speaking with Kral first. I'm sure they would hold their they would have told her their plans. I can read. Uh, I want to get rid of the hat for now. We'll, we'll put the hat back later. We're not in battle. And it's much nicer if you can see the face when, I, when it hits the cutscene. You're back! I take it you received your gift from Tataru? It was a surprise long, long in the making, with many, many long hours fretting to get everything just right. I'm glad to see it realized. It was a great success. Looking me up and down, as you see, is my weapon and armor. If you're looking for the others, though, they've all taken their leave. Yustrola, Thancrin, and Orionje have gone to the last stand for a bite to eat. Alize and Grahatia mean, meanwhile, thought their time a bit better spent pulling over books at Numenon. As for Athano and Astinian, well, they elected to pay a visit to the Levia estate, though Astinian seemed somewhat reluctant to go. I'm sure they would all be glad for your company if you mind to seek them out. Should you be feeling peckish, I suggest heading to the last stand before Yustrola and the others finish eating. But above all else, it would be foolish to he run headlong into battle or fatigue mess, so do remember to get a good night's sleep. Of course, there's a specific order to do this all through. Uh, last stand. Let's, let's go just pop over the Scholar Harbor. It's probably faster to do that instead of running around. Nope. The other way. Oh, last stand's like right here. Amigos, come to make make our trio quartet, have you? Please, have a seat. We'll see about getting you a drink. Your business with Tataru is finished. Oh. Go ahead, just put this on out of play. My, what a thoughtful surprise. Hmm. Whatever would we do without her? Indeed. And she's right, you know. It hasn't been all doom and gloom. Feels like a lifetime ago that Master Louis Soir gathered us together to form the Circle of Knowing. Since then, we have experienced much. But rather than feeling wiser, the more I learn, the more I find my knowledge lacking. Forsooth, as a student, vainly did I believe that I held the secrets of creation in my grasp. Yet that which I had seized was but an insignificant sliver of what awaited in the wider world. Every encounter, every experience hath served to open mine eyes enlightening and humbling me in equal measure. Even from those whom I called enemies have I learned many a valuable lesson. What will we learn at the edge of the universe, I wonder?
Ultima Thule, where the bringer of the end makes her nest. <laughs> I, for one, can't possibly imagine. But whatever awaits us there, we will survive. We must. For her. You've nothing to prove, not to read nor Mithelia. We'll get through this together. Just make sure you bring enough ammunition. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get many uh, uh, viewers uh, racks. But... See, Libby, I like I I enjoy the stream. Really, it's more making videos for for the comes out loud YouTube channel. But hey, what do you? But anyways, um, yeah, I'll say it. let's say nothing to prove, not to read. So I'm fill you. Is what the matter? No, it's nothing. I just... Well, lately I find myself surprised at how much I've changed. How much we've all changed. <laughs> we've come far together. And if we have aught to say about it, we'll go further still. Aye, we will avert this calamity and return home. I'll say this in on the story. For which, we it's must give really good. To what we hope to achieve I just like Shadowbringers better. Settled. What with the primals and Asians all but dealt with, I suppose we'll need to look for new hobbies. In all seriousness, though, in uniting to overcome a common foe, the disparate peoples of the world have found a way forward together. It's a truly gratifying sight to see. This is actually my second playthrough of the story. Indeed. Though it was many years in the making, we have successfully set in motion the gears of fundamental change. With this, we have fulfilled our humble role as a symbol of hope. And I dare say it is time to bow out. After all, there is no shortage of hands to bear the torch in our stead. You know, I never really considered I might live long enough to see an after. But even if my time as a scion came to an end, I don't expect that much would change. Traveling the world, going wherever the wind blows, Lending a hand to those in need. A journey for journey's sake. It doth suit thee well. I must confess I too have yearned to see more of the world. If thou art amenable to the suggestion, I would accompany thee. Mine ability to affect an air of normalcy through artful disguise is much improved, thou must concede. Aye, well, improvement is relative. You still look <laughs> suspicious, no matter what you wear. What of you, Ishtola? Any grand plans? Why, continue my quest for knowledge, naturally. To begin with, I wish to know the state of the reflections, to which end I must find a means to travel between worlds. It is the least I must do if I am to keep my promise. Should my pursuits prove unduly arduous, I won't hesitate to call on you. And in return, I will take you to see Reen one day. I'm sure you cannot wait to see the fine young woman she has become. <laughs> Spare me. Come on, Dad Grid. And what of thee? What wouldst thou pursue at duty's end?
Here's yours. My apologies for the wait. Well, shall we make a toast? To victory. To our comrades. To the future of the star. Who did think Oriange would have ale instead of uh, wine, which both the Shola and I are having? I'm assuming based off the glasses and bugs. Even so soon, I suppose it's for the best. Would you rather not explore the bottom of a bottle with the Orianger? I dare say the others would welcome your company as well, if you find them, that is. In any case, as long as you make the most of your time, then that is all that it matters. Alright, so I have a choice to go see Alize or go see Alphano. Um, I'm actually going to go see Alphano in order to rescue Astinian. Also, knowing uh, the current state of Alize and Graha, um, I, I, I think it's more apropos that they're last. Oh, the Stinian's out of his armor. How weird. <laughs> I'd ever oh. think go. What brings you here? Yeah, just checking on everybody after I got my ah, gift from so Tatar. You were worried that the Levia household might again be gripped by turmoil. <laughs> All is well, I assure you. In my letters home, I had made mention of a Stinian, you see. My mother wished to meet the legend in person, and so we arranged to have a spot of tea together. Where were you in my hour of need? <laughs> Fell beasts I can face, but I'm not made for idle chit-chat with lords and ladies. Well, I for one thought you held your own. Mother was the picture of delight. <laughs> I might have been delighted myself, were we in a tavern with more agreeable drink. The thought of fleeing crossed my mind, but what then? <laughs> I'd never hear the end of it. Least of all from Tataru. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was not my intent to cause you such distress. It's just... It was one of the things I didn't want to leave undone ere we set forth. And I wanted to introduce my it's boyfriend to, to mom and dad. <laughs> Yet, given what lies ahead, I did not wish to leave for later that which I could do today. After all, tomorrow is never promised. It's fine. Not like I had better things to do. Besides, seeing you with your mother brought back fond memories of my own. Be we rich or poor, family is family. Well, it's past time we were on our way. Wait! Since I left home, I've made a great many mistakes. Mistakes for which I can never make amends. But through it all, 
You didn't give up on me. To have returned here with you at my side, it means more to me than you know. Oh, Alpha, no. Don't get sentimental. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. <sighs> Forgive me, but it needed to be said. I'm the one who owes you thanks. Were it not for you, I would not be alive today, nor come to terms with Nidhogg's spirit. I am ever grateful. Uh, let's see. I suppose I ought to thank you both as well. You were never one to forsake a friend, Alphano, or I'll be counting on you. Hmm. Eh, you were never one to forsake a friend, Alphano. <laughs> no, I'm not. And I'm proud of that. Time to go see Alize and Gra. Who are way over here. I knew Manon. <laughs> With overcoming depression. Maybe? I don't think if... If it was, I don't think it was intentional. You try speaking with Alize, eh? and she's fast asleep. And so is Graha. I'll just sit here and take a nap with you guys. A little meditation. Oh. them they're probably dreaming about the celestial adventures to come just as well they've been running themselves ragged of late unlike you and the others I'm a few steps removed from the danger and excitement the things you all get up to never fail to impress me but by the same token I can't help but worry not only for your safety, but, but for your happiness. After everything you've sacrificed, you earned it a thousand times over. From the simple pleasures of tucking into a hearty meal or, or collapsing into a comfortable bed, to the grand triumphs of Visiting legendary lands or finding true love. You deserve all the joy in the world. There 
is so much that life has to offer. So much to be treasured and shared with those we hold dear. So promise me this. Come what may, you won't give up on your own happiness. When you're out there fighting tooth and nail, it's all too easy to forget. But in the end, your passions will be your greatest strength of all. Remember that. Good morning. Feels familiar. Well, it is good to be. Uh, wait. What are you? What am I? Gods, don't tell me I fell asleep. Not that there's any shame in it, but you were sleeping like babies. Oh. How embarrassing. Not a word to anyone. Understood? Not one word. No I'm promises. That sleeping in proper beds of your own choosing is a much more effective way to prepare for battle. Oh. So, what were the two of you doing here? I had a few books to return to the library. Thought I'd take care of it while I could. And you? Hey, and checking you. Just enjoying a little peace and quiet. You know, I, I probably would, despite the fact that she said not one word, I'd probably end up telling somebody. <laughs> At the most opportunity. Putting way. Oh, there we go. I have come to this studium in order to study the ways of pudding. Alas, my creations don't jiggle as they should just yet, but I persevere. <laughs> can I can I tell her it's like you know I uh, I, I would recommend if you if you really want to know about pudding. It'd probably be better if you went to a better culinary institution like the uh, Bismarck uh, in the culinary skill in, in Limsa Lamensa. Not the studium or anywhere in Charlene. I will say this. Charlene has a lack of culinary experts, except for the last stand. That's like... Bast last bastard of hope of color uh, of any culinary goodness in Charlian. Anyways, let's go back to the Baldessian annex and go to bed. One more night. One more night until going off to the ends of the universe. Welcome back, I'm guys. Turn to catch the final few weeks before embarking on your mission, I presume. Be happy to know your chambers have been cleaned and fresh linens laid out. I pray you enjoyed the sweetest dreams on this final night before the big day. Look, you make it sound like I'm getting married, but I'm not. I haven't even found a bow yet. I, ha I haven't shipped Emigos with anybody. I've shipped... Uh, Elagos with Enzar Slofferson, the Storm Marshal. I've 
I've shipped Essegos with uh, Pippinel Din. The current uh, Flame Marshal? Even the battle you pine for so dearly. In that transcendent moment, what was it that I sought in you? Was it that you sought in me? Genos, you're just a guy that makes a lot of bad decisions. I mean, I sought to stop you and drive you off. That's it. I thought to free El Amigo. That's what I thought. Also, to get rid of Shinryu. Often have we thus assembled to combine our knowledge and seek solutions to the problems before us. Back at the Waking Sands, it was all we could do to address the most minor of troubles. Who could have realized what we'd find when we began to look to the sources of the realm's woes? At the Rising Stones, we made great strides and shared many moments. From the joyous to the sorrowful. We've had occasion to call other places home too. Be it Ishgard or Kugane, we were fortunate to find sanctuary wherein we might take stock and continue our fight. I was honored to host this company in the Crystarium, to stand with you all as we confronted the truth of the star itself. And now from this place, we go to fight the most important battle of all. The Forum has sent word. The Ark is ready. The Loperates naturally will be commanding the vessel. They will see the eight of you to Ultima Thor. Upon arriving, your objective is to find and vanquish Meteon. As a final formality, the Forum bade me ascertain your resolve. So, are you certain you wish to do this?
We are. Then, ere you report to Thalmasain, I leave you with these words. You must triumph. What that means will differ for each of you. To make it back home, or to simply avert doom, or perhaps something else altogether. Yet whatever it is that drives you, I have faith in its power to see you through. So please, triumph. Triumph, as we who remain behind believe you will. Let us be off then. Wait! Both Kryl and I will be there to see you off, but as your receptionist, I feel I need to say this here. Safe journey, all of you, and oh, be safe. You can count on it. The Taro is so adorable. I can't bear to see her cry. It makes me cry and just become a mess. I suppose this is where we part ways, for now at least. Would that I had sage words of wisdom to share with ere you depart. Mayhap the teachings of Gareth Bardessian will suffice. Surrender not to anger or hatred, he said. Look beyond them, they find true strength. What one sees beyond is open to interpretation, I think, but for me it would be the things I cherish most in life, things I believe are worth fighting for. Something to consider as you venture out onto the Sea of Stars. Alright. We go to Poria. Going to the place where you can't fly. Look at all these people! We got Alpha! Q? 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 Alpha appears to be trying to cheer you on. Omega? Leap loop. A miniature bottle of Omega appears to be staring intently at the Ark. We got Inanna, we got Coltene, Horde Boulder, Evelyn, Erinvel, Varshan, Luida, and D Vilsen, and all of the rest. Back to first room. I'm not going to spend the time talking to everybody. And a variation on the music we had at the very beginning of this entire thing.
all present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. But we did it. We finished the ship. It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you. For everything. Ah, oh, don't mention it. Ever since that episode with Omega, I've been toying with the idea of starfaring vessels. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. We've learned a lot, let me tell you. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. <laughs> Feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world, and in so doing, laid down his life. Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home. I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. There's the car. What are you all doing here? Oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. You've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. But a brilliant idea came to me. We convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves! Thou wouldst employ summoning, or should I say, its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? 
As you may have witnessed at Bestway's Burrow, the Loperits are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, tis a highly advanced and exacting art. To perform it correctly requireth that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancient's meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it. A derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Loperit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul, or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, We'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk of being turned into a tempered minion? Oh, right! I was getting to that! From what I've read in Charlian tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, our creation magics, the original and the best, except no substitutes, don't incorporate <laughs> any of that rubbish, so there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug, but I think we'll be safe enough. Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan. But none of us would ever turn our backs on you. When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods. Not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. Alright you lot, we're heading to the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Leave the way! May we have a moment? In anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars, we developed these. Portable teleportation devices. One for each of you, designed to work in tandem. Press the button on one, and in a matter of moments, all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing.
If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed. If you come this way, I will direct you to the bridge. Upon boarding the Ragged Rock, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in their entirety. <coughs> See. Yeah, I think I got sufficient time. Off to Ultima Thule! First heard this music, I swear in Shadowbringers, my favorite expansion. Ah, I love it. Welcome I love how the pilot is sleeping way. I hope you have everything, because I can't be bothered turning back. Right then, make yourselves comfortable. We're setting off in just a moment. One thing I notice about a lot of spaceships nowadays, a lack of seatbelts. This is Forshano. Can you hear me? The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. So, are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. The burnt out star's got more fire in its belly. Try it again, with feeling. Issue the command launcher, have Alpha do the honors. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it. Tell you this, this is very Japanese. I love it. I love it. And the summonings commence. Freet. Titan. Here's the 
Leviathan. Ivana, Bismarck. Good King Magamag the 12th. Gotta say the whole thing. I love this part. Ah! That I must carry landwalkers into the sky! I cannot imagine a greater indignity! <laughs> Do not sulk so! For thy mighty winds exist not only to buffet and batter! Nay, they may serve also to thrust forth with vigor! Such is thy glory, and thus it is an occasion to rejoice! So come, let us revel! I love Susana so much. as it should be in creation. I will render unto them a storm that they may pierce the firmament and fly free! Ether burner to get us off the ground. And the hopper technology, I forgot what they called it. Get them across space and time. Basically, they're jumping out of hyperspace. are roaring and we're ripping along. All values are also within projected ranges. Time to destination is eight carats. Perhaps seven at a pinch. All right. Let's go over some points of caution. Our destination, as you know, is Ultima Thule. Lest you wonder, the place is not a star so much as a patch of emptiness. That's the extent of what our equipment could determine, anyway. From what we know of Meteon, she's likely used Dynamis to obfuscate her location. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. See to it the ship's ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. Just don't do anything I wouldn't, like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits, and you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. I suggest you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive, and the vessel will shake a good bit. <laughs> Hmm. 
What is this? Something is... Oh, interfering with the equipment. Greetings. Greetings. Can you hear me? Meteon. So this is Meteon. Oh. Have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself. But I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love, they amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost, stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is, convince yourselves, but it's all a cruel accident. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. Gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Hydlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial. And in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. I... I can't... breathe! 
You approach the bounds of my ultimate. Where emotions dictate to reality. Where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end. Where those who yet valiantly cling to life can thrive. Tancred? Meteon is gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh, everyone? It appears we are at our destination. This, this is Ultima Thule. Not that we knew what to expect, but I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all readings are within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life. If that's the case, then Thancred may well have gone on ahead. Let's go and have a look. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. Gladeus. In following their path walked and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. And it's out. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this. The final chapter in the tale of the star. I is this a dead star? itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care. All right, we will still make sure we're looking for ether currents, which seems weird in a land which was probably created by dynamis. There are ether currents, but that's also a game mechanic in order to learn to fly. That's it. All right, let's get the uh, UI back. I can't guarantee that it will be of help in the strange surrounds, but I'm ready to provisions. Uh, Provisions node in case of emergency. Of course, if you encounter any real danger here, I expect you to return to the Ragnarok at once.
uh, there. For good measure, let's see, earring is at 85, so let's uh, give me earrings of slain. Is that bracelet? This band of slain. And a ring of slain. Oh. And of course, I didn't need to get any of those. I just need to make sure I updated my thing. Okay. <laughs> We're fortunate this place can support life, albeit barely. I suspect, given the torpid, stale quality of the air. But never mind that. We must find Thancred. Let's begin our search for the prow of the ship. Seems as good as directions. Try not to stray too far, lest we lose sight of one another. Ostracon Deca Octo. But of what, I wonder? Perhaps we'll find something to help us understand the nature of this place. Relic, an inscription, anything. The metallic pillar has been partially melted, likely some, sometime in the distant past. The damage does not appear to have been inflicted deliberately, Rather, it seems to call the indiscriminate destruction once wrought in the heat of battle. Look here, this part relatively intact. The intricate design of the top suggests it's man-made, though its builders have surely not been as we conceive of them. Saints, having said that, I swear I've seen this pattern before. If you recognize it. Oh. I can't fly yet, so... I thought this hill might afford a better view of the surroundings. Poor decision in hindsight. Beside the light from the ship, it's all shrouded in darkness. Thancred is here, I'd never know it. From what I can tell, we are near the edge of an island. If I can call, you can call it that. Surrounded by floating debris. Give me a check by out. Oh. Let me check out my check about because I keep forgetting to see if I, I've gotten more skill points. I do have more skill points.
Uh, they're focusing on the uh, healer. Are you able to find anything? No. Let's uh, take this if I can read it. As I feared, and still no trace of Thancred. There's nothing but emptiness as far as the eye can see, which unfortunately isn't very far. Though I can't help but suspect that someone or something is here. There are times where I sense it's drawing close, and then a chill washes over me. And me feel you me exhausted. You me with feelings of death and anguish. I think I might see something over there. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. Before we jump in conclusions, perhaps we should search elsewhere. Agreed. We found only more questions than when we are in desperate need of answers. There's a fair stretch of terrain from the ship's port side. We've yet to explore. Let's try searching there, then. I'm going to go some work before we join the others. You see them too, don't you? The dragons? Yep. As I thought, their presence is tenuous at best, but there's no mistaking it. No doubt my bo your bond with Midgard Summer and mine with Nidhogg is what allows us to perceive them. Could these apparitions be related to the dragons that now live on Etheris? Ah, better to leave such conjecture to the others. In any case, we must be careful. We may soon find dragons they can see as well. Mm, death and anguish. What happened to them, I wonder? Neither right. play now that uh, voice voice lines what you see is a memory of a world that once was 
a world suffering a slow death, whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow and shade, perpetuated only to suffuse Dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Thancred, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes. He is here, and there, and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the oblivion I send. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you. Emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. <laughs> Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. But Thancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. So without body, a form give being, form of being which, with which we are not wholly f unfamiliar. Indeed, as we existed in a similar state when residing in the first. The circumstances are rather more dire than that, tis true, but I cho choose to believe he is not forever lost to us. 
Regardless, in sacrifice he hath afforded us a chance to prevail. Let us not squander it, and ascertain the nature of this realm that we might confront and defeat Meteon. Mistinian, Amigos, would you accompany me in su speaking with these dragons? Mayhap they can enlighten us. I would ask the rest of you to survey the, these surroundings. If there is a path that may lead us to our quarry, we must find it. Very well. We can reconvene here when every, everyone has finished. Meteon said these dragons were sh shadow and shade from a world whose denizens sought oblivion. As such, we are not, not like to be amenable to company, let, us, let alone conversation, so please be careful. Let us split up and gather what knowledge we may. Visitor, not of the star. Good thy slender hands bring plague to our world. Thy breath extinguish life's feeble flame. Oh, how we would adore thee, alas. With time our flesh shall wither, our souls fade. And so we wait for this inexorable march into oblivion. If thou art not to hasten our demise, I bid thee leave us. We crave not companionship, only silence. Beyond that distant veil, paradise lost, so glorious, so beautiful. We are, were a proud and noble race, strength and both bodied. We knew only love before they came. Metal monstrosities of black and silver. No bound, bonds of blood did they share, nor conviction did they have to guide them. A crushing defeat. Never had we known such shame. Still that now are the winds, though none could fill these wings burdened by ignominy. We fly no more, only sink into oblivion. Thou wouldst bid me speak, hmm? Folly. I observe the lesson of stone. I shall not fly, nor speak, nor roar. Only watch and wait and end. But one sight yet stirreth my blood, tempteth me to raise my voice in lamentation. I'm Noel, the cradle of unsung dragons. No song, words, no songs are possessed of the weight to describe such tragedy. Go. If that be thy will, I shall remain. They led you here as well, did they? It was described to me as the source of their woes and proof of their end. I think I'm beginning to see why. It's a hatching ground, or was. It seems similar in Aetherus. Megar Sormer's kind must once have lived and thrived in a place such as this. 
Vitra said his father was driven from their ancestral home by war and strife. This then is the fate of those who remained. Let's have a look around. Maybe these eggs have more to tell than what had happened here. Inside the shattered egg, you find the remains of an unborn dragon. The body has already begun to decompose. The gelatinous half-dried membrane covering the corpse suggests it failed to emerge. A murky liquid is pooled inside the eggshell. The noxious festering is indicative of contamination. Gingerly lifting a la large egg from the vi viscous mire, you peer inside and see a formless mass soaking in a pool of embryonic fluid. Your stomach churns as you return the egg to its resting place. This egg appears to have been broken from the inside out. Perhaps the dragon it, it within succeeded in hatching. What's this? I thought all the eggs have been ruined. If the dragon it, it has indeed hatched, there's no, there's no sign here. Or at Sire, for that matter. You should look for them. You start with the cli cliff tops, I'll search the plates. Bolster's howling has quieted. Everything all right? I heard a dragon or something resembling one. Ah, I see what happened here. Was that your child? Perhaps some eggs within Amnol are indeed mine. If life within one did have quickened, the beast that has sl slain may be of my blood. Yet I do, do not recognize it, twisted and malformed as it is. Not a dragon in truth, but a remain, reminder of our failure, a testament to our shame. Explain. They descended from the heavens, cold, heartless machines. With them rode war and death, with fire and fury, rage and rancor. We gave answer. It was a long, bloody battle, but only the beginning. Untold chaos and destruction swept over the star. In the end, the invaders were victorious. Yet, when they looked upon their prize, they deemed it unfit for requisition. We were abandoned to our ruin. The survivors sought, sought to put away their shame, to rebuild a futile effort. The purest soil replete with ether did we once cultivate our nesting grounds, but our lands were barren and any eggs nurtured in such desolation were faded to rot. What few survived to hatch emerged as abominations. We shall have no new progeny. But there are dragons among you, among you capable of journeying to other stars. That they are, 
Many would make the attempt, each bearing a clutch of eggs. The British stars were home to the harshest rulers, and the arrival of dragons incited contests of supremacy. When the fires faded, the wars lost and won. They too, the two were reduced to ash and waste. Tis the curse of those who seek life to be drawn into conflict, to conquer and be conquered. Vicious cycle we now choose to break. We tire of conflict, of everything. We wait now in sweet, merciful silence, free from strife and suffering, still as stone. Wait, you claim your kind is doomed? But there's another star. They want only to brood in silence, to be left alone in their grief until time, time itself comes to an end. The sole reward of senseless bloodshed, the pain I understand and wish that I did not. But fools we were. But now isn't the time for such thoughts. The others will want to hear what we've learned. Come. Were you able to re-establish any meaningful contact with the dragons? Exposition See, they wish to escape what they perceive to be the cycle of conflict. Thank you, Omegos, Estadine. As for our part, I believe we are more acutely aware of our confines than before. We started by tra traversing the perimeter of the island to see if there might be a path leading off of it. Sadly, there is nothing to be found. There's no small amount of debris floating about. Could there be enough to f serve as a bridge to lead us elsewhere? I considered that, and so I tried throwing a stone into a potential platform to judge its integrity. But it never reached its mark, as it crossed an invisible threshold just beyond the borders of the island vanished, only to reappear above me and fall at my feet. I would not be too quick to presume that we, what we see outside this space is as it appears. Which is why I returned to the Ragnarok and asked the Leopards to search for a potential path. However, the ship's instrument fa failed to provide conclusive data on the surrounding area. Until we know more, I think it's too risky to attempt flying to another island. What Meteon told us about before, that emotions dictate reality here might be the key, but I'm not entirely sure what emotion might manifest a bridge to lead us to safety. So what you're saying is there's no way forward. At present, I, if there's indeed emotion that governs this island, perhaps it is not meteons, but the dragons that hold us here. They tire of conflict and have chosen a path of oblivion to escape it. Or rather, they have chosen no path at all, meaning there is no way for the dragons or anyone here on this island to advance. Song theory, disheartening though it may be. If that is the case, what recourse do we have? It is not like to be persuaded to help us. Their reasoning is built on a history of turmoil and strife. Without irrefutable proof of the future, it's not as bleak as they believe it to be. 
Yeah, persuasion's not the answer. Metion meant to unmake us then, and there on the Ragnarok, and she would have succeeded if not for Thancred's determination. She conceded it was strong enough to overpower the despair that otherwise rules on the Ultima Thule, and reshape it to a degree. Perhaps it can be done again in like manner, by overpowering the prevailing emotions. Twas Ultima Thule's architect, Metion herself, against whom Thancred did pit himself in a clash of wills, Though I marked no leader among them as such, I did chance to encounter a dragon possessed of despair far more potent, potent than others, potent enough mayhap to dictate the course of others, and thus their domain to follow. He spoke but few words, chosen, carefully chosen, their tone and timber alone threatened to rend my heart in twain. Challenging his desire to remain may allow us to alter the island upon which we stand. Alas, I fear my vaunted rhetoric availed me not against this calcifying heart. Mayhap one of you will fare better. And I shall guide thee. I'll end. I'll end. I'll end. They call him in the dragon tongue. Thou wilt find him nearby, eyes fixed upon the water. Well, what have we, we to lose? Let's get going. He remaineth as he was when I first approached, entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. Waiting to die like all the others, are you? Our pride is crushed, our souls corrupted. The winds are stilled, and the heavens offer no comfort. There's nothing left for our kind. Our long life, lives a curse that we wait, wait the end. Still as stone, we shall become. So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. Our kin on another star? And yet, upon thee do I smell the blood of my brethren.
They're drawn into discord and war on their new home. They were. They suffered much and repaid their suffering in kind. It mattereth not whither we fly. Ever since the sanguine ocean await us, ever will retribution wheels retribution's wheel turn. And so, on the last of my pride as a dragon, I break free of this wheel. I renounce conflict, exile myself from the other, never again to be touched by the flames of hatred. Had your brethren made the selfsame choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. You must be willing to confront it. To stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy. This lesson a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Estinian! Stay back! Be tired, Lord. We tire of turmoil. Dignity tarnished, crimson stained. Our misery, our shame, too much to bear. Release us from war, from life. There's a wind. He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. Let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not.
there, the wind. This is a Sinian stream, I'm sure of it. We should ride its flow and see where it leads. Powerful Gale has delivered you to another island. The other island should be arrive before long. He did it. He found a way forward for us. The dragons remained trapped within a prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war, yet Estinian knew them better than most. He was a man of honor and a friend, willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. And he's still fighting, Alphano, just like Thancred. Their sacrifices are why we, we can survive here, why we still have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they are unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Alize is right. We must press on, for their sake. Alright, quick question back. Here back. And we're back. As your shoulder and Alize said, we must continue. I might give up on accents, so go with it. Hmm. There is a change in our surroundings. Perhaps this is the memory of an altogether different world. It would be prudent to learn more of it, then. Tread carefully, lest we lose our footing in the sand. Step one, be prepared to, uh, grab stuff. Were it not for the violet crystal embedded in the surface, it would appear 
as an ordinary stone, a curious script has been etched upon them. Alas, it's not a language which I am familiar. Cannot say I recognize it either. Nor I. The dragons for which I recall preserve their knowledge in song and exude the written bird entirely, so we would assume this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Meteon claimed the dragon's world suffered a slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way toward a similar end. Do you suppose that that is over there? I'm not sure. It's hard to make out in the distance, and its surface seems to bear the same crystals as the monument. Meaning there's a chance we can find, find whoever built them both. You should go and have a look. Come on. All right, this island has five ether currents in the north. There's one. See if we can avoid these drifting ea. this way quickly. Just briefly. Have the wiki up. Oops, that's how I know. Oop. Into the water. Lost my mount. Go around the water and I won't lose my mount. There we are. There it is. Three ether currents. Hail, travelers, is most unexpected occurrence. Oh, uh, hello there. Is this your home? Indeed it is. Ah, forgive me, I've forgotten the exchange of introductions is expected when first meeting those of whom one is unacquainted. From the vibration of vocal folds are still required to convey our thoughts and intentions. Ia, 
I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. So it is not entirely applicable given our present state. We are welcome to you are welcome to use this appella appellation. Appellation? Appellation? As for as for nomenclature to address to my individual person, I believe it would be pronounced uh Kafkug. Kug. Yes, Kafkug Altia. We have encountered beings that communicate intimately through thought, but never one that is wholly without voice. I presume you are having this conversation via the medium of ether or dynamis, as this space is suffused with vast quantities of it. Fascinating in either case. I gather your response with my presence is positive then. That is well, for there is something I wish to ask of you. Like yourselves, we EI are ether based life forms. Therefore, it may, may be surmised that, our, that your bodies are a comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective uh, perception of the five senses, sights, sound, ta taste, touch, and smell. In total, I have prepared 198,712,180,827. Oh, that's rather a lot, isn't it? Oh, my apologies. I admitted a great many deal details necessary to I have omitted a great de many detail necessa details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispensed with our corporeal vessels long ago, we have, redis we have rediscovered a need for the flesh and having endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate, but we have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may compromise our ability to interact with our physical environment. And the reason you need to regain corporeal forms? Why, to bring an end to our existence, of course. No need is perhaps too strong a word. It would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves through use of etheric exsanguinators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalists among us believe proper death requires an inescapable inex sense of impermanence in one's final moments, an experience found only with bodies of flesh. You should very much like to hear more of your plans. In exchange, we will answer your, any questions you have to the best of our ability. Hmm, such an exchange of information would prove, indeed prove useful. Very well, to ensure efficacy exchange, I hereby invite you to our home. Yes, the abode of the year, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume your con consent to answer questions is indicative of the tech a tacit approval of our plans, in which case your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I must caution you, however, to be mindful of the ear wandering in the desert. Their desire for bodies of flesh could be described as overzealous. Now, if you would follow me. This is going rather smoothly. Not that I'm complaining, mind. Even so, we mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. Though I fail to see why a civilization so seemingly advanced would choose to unmake all they have created. At any rate, we will find no answers dallying here. Let us be on our way.
I'll get that later. Yeah, this is... Your knowledge leads. Welcome to our abode. Most of our compeers you will find remain idle in their domiciles, though your quizzical expressions indicate my phrasing is unclear. I speak, of course, of the violet uh, crystalline constructs hanging from the stone structures there. You say they remain idle, and what of, what of their work to regain corporeal bodies? An astute question, understandable, given your finite nature. We have no desire to peruse your, our, our research or it is no longer necessary. If in our idleness we have st struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue, pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That's why I, uh, I was present for your arrival and why I continue to engage with you still. And while the others are not currently in a mortal state, a modal state, state rest assured they would not object were you to disturb their respite. You need only cast your thoughts towards one of their crystalline domiciles to communicate. cast her thoughts toward the crystalline dot file, but there is no response. You, you wish to speak? Very well. Pray a moment, if you would. Why we seek our end, you ask? If you wish to know, I will tell you. Just a moment, I must remember. What form did I take when I last... I ugh, ugh. The strange moaning comes and goes, but soon fades into silence. Careful for pools of water. Did your inquiries yield satisfactory responses? I see. If they fail to answer, it's likely because their minds have unraveled due to prolonged idleness. They are not but con concentrated either now. Why not? There are no others who, who have need of these lodgings. They will not pro prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more importantly, you said some few did answer your request for an audience, yes? I imagine they will be with us ere long. I had no luck, but everyone else fared well. But everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few ear have awakened. Ah, there they are.
I introduce you La Lock, Duduk, and Nanig. It has been too long, Kafka Kug. I dare say, Saturn 4 has since completed in orbit. Indeed, to the, until the travelers brought it to my attention, I noticed how unraveled some had come, become. Travelers? Ah, of course, of course, the ones who wish to know why we seek, seek to regain corporeal forms. The truth of the matter is, plain, is as plain to see as the neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirements of scientific objectivity. Thus did I bid them awaken you. Am I the only one who struggles to tell who is speaking? Nay, thou art, art not the absence of corporeal forms and the divergence they afford may have such similarities of voices unavoidable. By the way, Kofkoog, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That which is expected to do with receiving guests? A matter of proper form. Ah, yes, so long as it's been, it's completely escaped my mind and still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Neither do I. Pity, I was hoping you would. would. Perhaps you should search the archives for the answer. Come now, Nina. Nina, the archives have long been frozen, lest we subject ourselves to further dollar. Surely you recall that much. Ah, of course, food. The custom is to serve food. Pra beings of flesh, such such as they are, can, must regularly replenish their ether. By contributing to their replenishment, we communicate our friendly intention. That's right! That's right! We do invite you to join us in communal repast, of which we, we may in engage in the conversation. As we have a chance to learn something, then I see no reason to decline. Excellent, if you would care to follow, we will feast you on the purest ether. The facility is where we replay the shy ether. There is no particular name for it, but our, we traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, this space will soon be awash with pure ether. Please absorb as much as you like. Brace yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether, but nothing seems to happen. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer. Brace yourself again, but again, nothing seems to happen. Just as I suspected, as particular as one might recreate the ES home, well, this is Ultima Thule. Thule, one cannot simply generate ether here. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact to the very truth of their existence, much like the phantoms of the recreated Amarot. However, appearances may, may seem, we must ever be mindful that it is the memories of the dead of whom we deal. So, did you have your field of ether? Alas, we couldn't absorb it. A delicacy in our a deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Oh, so how very unfortunate. May I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Culinary... Through your mouths, you say? How very primitive and quaint. To think that their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but draw in such besides, such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. Uh, 
Though we regrettably could not partake in your magnificent feast, rest assured we feel your welcome most keenly. In the course of acquainting ourselves with your sophisticated ways, however, we could not fail but wonder, for do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh and thence to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? You fish and bug bees are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Ia first yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors dedicated our, themselves to the pursuit of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending our limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. From the tangible such as the such as land to the intangible such as layer, there exist myriad hindrances to progress, but the most confining of all was the flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressing in many limb, you see, too short to enjoy unhurried lives, yet too long to be considered indisposable. Furthermore, to maintain, simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. But we managed to solve this problem. After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives untroubled by the failures of the flesh. Thus changed, we have more time and freedom to continue our scientific pursuits. We went on to make an even greater strategy in our quest to transcend all limitations until we finally decided to challenge the last of them all, the limit of knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all ex extant phenomena, and thence to uh, predict the future. If we could but, but achieve this, we believed we would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. And did you find the answers you sought? Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed us to us a fundamental truth. Knowledge of said truth is essential to the continuation of our conversation. If you would learn more, we will share it with you. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, we must it would unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. They are possessed of corporeal forms, their lives readily ended. As those who have gone before, it is not our duty to warn them. What thinkest thou? We have deliberated and came to a consensus. If you are resolved to know it, we will disclose to you the truth we discovered, the truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the bounds of the abode, a place called Elegia. A fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let us learn what has led to such an enlightened people to this indolent end. Ere we join the year, there is one trifling matter I would fain investigate. And it goes, Krahatia, might I trouble you for your assistance? But of course. My thanks. We shall head outside the abode if you would kindly follow me. I know not what mischief you are plotting, Omar Yangé, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. The rest of us shall go on ahead to El Gia. Unless you worry, we won't start without you. Okay. Where knowledge leads.
There's one more ether current on this island, and then once we get to the next one, there'll be five more. And there are two quests after this quest that we're on, so we will do those. So that we can easily, as soon as we get the final one, which is part of the main story quest line. Why does he have to go so far out of the abode? We do not know. I, this place shall serve. Is it a spring that you wish to investigate? Pray forgive me, my friends, but there is not to investigate. But it was but a pretense to speak in private. You have an all undivided attention. As you have established, this here no tool, those denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed are the simulacra that they believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? We can make contact with them while they still lived. Of course, she must have visited the stars of the dragons and the Ea before either race perished in their entirety. Thus could she make their emotions her own, own and them, them create more faithful simulacra than had she relied on her, any historical account. So, too, did I theorize, and upon that assumption, consider how these two races may have met their demise. According to thine own tale, Metion perceiveth the emotions of the those nearby as her own, a heightened sense of empathy intrinsic to her nature as an intellect. In the course of her starfaring journey, she encountered beings who strongly desired a cessation of their existence. She would be powerless before that desire. Even as she possesseth the power to grant it, the power of dynamis. It is my supposition that overwhelmed by the longing for death, Meteor did unleash dynamis and ushered the dragons in the ear onto their doom. Of course, such was not always the outcome. For many stars did she find almost already lost to ruin. In order to create a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should we, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourself this. The place where you stand, stand the, who's in the soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion. Why do you tell us this now? Now again would I betray your trust. This pledge I did make to my comrades in bringing thee into my confidence. I would remain true to my word. As for thee, let us consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Exarch. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy side, full knowing that you are bound bound for thy, de thy demise. I ask now that thou returneth the favor and bide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. If you say my debt ha has come due, how am I to refuse? It is indelicate of me, I know full well. 
and I can but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even if I must needs go to such length, I cannot well feign ignorance in the answer I have found within. The answer to the question, in what moment might I stand strongest? After all we've been through, I will say only this. Do what you must. Do what you must and see your conviction through. I shall, my friend. I shall. Without further ado, then, let us join, go to join our comrades. Let's be off to, to Elegia. Alright, we're gonna make a jump. It's only 70 gil. Seems everyone is accounted for, shall we then? Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. Acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter into an eternal ice age. of proving that this determination was erroneous. We scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. 
the universe as we know it would end. And there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom, accumulated since the dawning of our kind, would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. So that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us. Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay. <sighs> It is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. 
We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. to restore it. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. Shall join me. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Ariange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist, and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn. Alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, 
we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can. Before your friend's emotions fade away. Along with their protection. Four science down. We haven't even gotten to the emotional part. Tomorrow, maybe. That's it for today. That's some either uh, Ether current quests to do. I'll do those offline. So we can focus on the MSQ. Raw has, has the next one. We'll see you next time. In part 13. This is a long one. <laughs>